Uh, a very warm welcome to all of you, our esteemed panelists today. Uh, we are delighted to have you today with us uh, for Elders Connect, which is uh, Elders India's first panel discussion, where we are going to engage in conversations about making elderly care inclusive and get insights and perspectives from each of you on how you consider elder care to be relevant in today's time. So I'm delighted to welcome our panelists today. Uh, quick introduction, uh, Mr. Alok Ori, who's the Managing Director and President for Dell Technologies India. Uh, Rajesh Kumar, who's uh, VP Marketing for UiPath India and South Asia. Uh, Arti Shirish, Head of Employee Relations for MasterCard. Dr. Parul Sharma, Director and HOD, Ophthalmology for Max Hospitals, Gurgaon and Delhi. Uh, we have Shilpi Singh, who is a leadership coach and also the co-founder for Studio 4. And the session is going to be led by K.S. Raghunandan, who is the founder for Elders India and Elders Wealth. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Over to you, Shilpi. Thanks, Reema. So we'll quickly jump into it. So uh, just wanted to share, I'm sure a lot of you had your one-on-one -on -one with Raghu, but the idea of... Um, Elders India, like I put in my post today, it's my mom's birthday today as well. And it's World Health Day and she's like one health freak person. And people who know me know I have a big love-hate relationship with her because I constantly fight. And, and I realize that you fight more out of love and out of fear. And uh, therefore, this is something which is so close to my heart. So when we met Raghu and Rima on this, uh, we said we had to uh, participate in this journey. And... Uh, you know, Raghu has been uh, uh, in conversations with various organizations. And I thought, you know, th the category is so nascent that people right now still feel that uh, what does elder care mean? Uh, it, there's no clarity out there. And therefore, we thought it's important that we start building some voices around it. And that's how the idea of this panel came up. Uh, and I told Raghu that, you know, people have to connect with you to kind of figure out what really this means. And, and once, uh, you know, we also create a collective voice wherein uh, uh, as an organization, we also know uh, what is there in people's mind, what are the perspectives which are there uh, and, you know, uh, how going forward, this will become a very critical part of inclusive workspace. Uh, you know, we are saying the great resignation has happened and uh, how, you know, keeping employees is a big challenge. Uh, and I'm seeing, uh, having been continuously worked with various organizations, I see that the initiatives are still very incremental because perhaps we're thinking what we were doing earlier, a little bit of change here and there, a little bit of more perks here and there uh, would do the magic. But I think where organizations really need will, will need to focus is to pivot into certain directions to make the life of the employee better, to make their loved one's life better, because I think going forward, staying at home and working from home that 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 barrier has dropped and and there is a greater sense of responsibility that everybody is awakened to uh, and i felt that this topic definitely can be a game changer for various organizations so um, over to you raghu i just wanted to set the context and thank you everybody for agreeing to come here it really makes a huge difference because of the huge, beautiful pedigree that you all come with, it definitely adds a lot of credibility to the conversation and going forward also would make it easy for us to reach out to more people and have continuous conversation in this space. So really thankful to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Shilpi. And thanks, thanks, Rima. Thanks to all the panelists for uh, agreeing at a fairly short notice. I think we reached out to you for over the last uh, six, seven days and all of you agreed. Thank you so much for participating in the first uh, of the uh, many conversational series. Uh, I hope uh, to bring more awareness, to more bring more and more stakeholders to kind of participate and and build uh, this thought process and um, and infrastructure and support for elder care in India. So, as uh, uh, Shilpi was mentioning, I've been I've been at it for a few years. It doesn't seem like few years, and, uh, but at the same time, um, when I look at it, uh, it, it's been a little bit of a personal journey as well for me uh, to to kind of uh, get into this space to try and understand what's happening in this area, 
um, you know, it, it, it was prompted by, uh, uh, you know, my frequent uh, hospitalization of my father after I came back to India. And, um, you know, I always felt a holistic view of an elderly patient is missing, but there's not much I can do. I'm not a medical professional. But when I started to think a little more about it, had a few uh, focus group discussions. Uh, and, and also when I looked at uh, what is happening um, in, uh, in the country from a demographic change, right? You know, then I felt this is a lot, lot more than uh, just uh, my personal issue. It is something that must be impacting uh, uh, quite a few of other employees, other professionals. And, um, you know, we have talked about this demographic changes. We are at a point in time where the uh, growth in elderly population is, 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 such, is happening at, at such a rate that, um, you know, many of us uh, will feel astonished if, if we understand the kind of growth rate. It is urban elderly population is growing at eight and a half times the average rate of growth of general population and 3.3 times the rural elderly population. So there is, there is something that's happening. It is partly also driven by the uh, movement of uh, parents into the cities as the only child. You know, these days we have more of nuclear families. Uh, once uh, they move in, they have a choice either to stay alone or to move with the child. That may be causing uh, this, but in general, Elderly population is increasing because of uh, the uh, lowering of the fertility as well as increasing in the longevity. So there are there are demographic factors uh, that uh, that is causing this uh, 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 need for us to take a very serious look at this. Uh, there are also challenges from an employee standpoint. You know that's one of the uh, that's a topic of today's discussion is, is whether the the corporate India is ready for doing something in this area. And uh, when, I, when I thought about it, um, uh, most of the employees, you know, after a few years in the organization, they get more uh, responsibilities, right? You know, as they become team leaders or managers, you know, the, the professional um, the, uh, the responsibilities increase and therefore the time pressure on, on the professional time that increases. They also, uh, you know, uh, potentially get married and have a small children, small child and the demand on the personal time from an immediate stand, uh, family standpoint also goes up. And unfortunately, around the same time, the parents become vulnerable <laughs> and they become senior citizens and, and, you know, the care for them also is something that uh, would be bothering the employees. So a lot of a lot of factors that the employees would have to balance and uh, and think about. But uh, the third thing that um, you know uh, prompted me to look at this was the state of the elder care industry itself. Um, uh, Shilpi, you characterize this as nascent. You know, even after a few years of looking at this, I I can't agree with you more. It's probably ninety eight percent of the providers in this space are unorganized. So there is a, there's a lot uh, that uh, an employee or a son or daughter would have to work to even figure out you know, what is possible and who, is, who are uh, the potential service providers here. And you know, how do I uh, get a view of who can provide a quality care, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of uh, issues here, quite a few stakeholders uh, in this elder care. And that's what I want to do something about. We'll, we'll talk about a uh, little more, um, you know, as we as we move further. But uh, one of the points that you raise, Shilpi, is, you know, what does elder care mean to us? So maybe that's something that we can get started with. Um, so uh, maybe, can I get started with you, Rajesh? Uh, yeah, sure. What do you, what do you think, what, what does elder care mean to you, I suppose? This is uh, firstly, I think it's it's a big topic which is very close to my heart as well. My mom turns eighty, you know, beginning of next month, and my father turns ninety next year. So it's it's a big topic, and uh, I've stayed for the longest years now away from them, you know. So it's uh, one topic which is always on my mind, and uh, I've tried to go through many of the motions that you said, and I've realized it's a multifaceted topic. And somehow, not only, at least for me, I thought I never 
realize the gravity of it i mean there is a aspect of overall you know their health and well being which we tend to think of possibly first as their health you know starts to fail and so on but i found it is also like you said with urbanization because of most of the private sector jobs being in the metros a lot of people like us have moved from metros right correct and so in a sense the elderly are lonely i think that's like a big big problem you know and and they need more of that more of companionship more of care attention than anything else and then of course there are simpler you know topics of quality of living space assisted services availability they are also um, you know struggling with the whole change of environment and the whole digitization i mean they came from an era when you had to wait 10 years to get a telephone connection suddenly they have to do otps and you know mobiles and the account operates from that it's very hard for them to figure out i mean even for the children if they have to get on a video call it isn't easy and in that garb at least like my parents stay in chandigarh you know on panchkula this old people city so many retired people there are so many scamsters keep calling up you do this you do this insurance that insurance and they have no one to go to and i mean i look back even we sometime get hard on them as this simple thing you can't figure out reality is they can't and there is nobody to tell them you know so i think it's a very complex topic and there is very little in terms of services in terms of thinking even social understanding of this issue absolutely i'm glad this topic is getting picked up i've been trying to as i realize be a part of this conversation like i mentioned to you some of the other you know friends and colleagues in this space as well so i mean i'd love to hear everyone's opinions absolutely anyone else to add to that uh, arthi you want to feel free to weave in your personal experience as well as uh, rajesh did um, so because you know we may not have two children all of us have two parents <laughs> yeah exactly and 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 as as rajesh said that this topic is close to his heart i think all of us are here this topic is actually close to our heart for many reasons for many many reasons for several reasons we are all at a stage in life i think wherein our kids are growing up and are going to that where they need a lot of attention one is going to a hostel one is giving a boards and and you no know, they are they are needing a lot of attention and our parents are at a stage which we always took for granted actually papa mama to you know they are just always there and suddenly we are getting into a situation that you know what there may be something else they are not well the blood pressure is not coming in control the sugar is not coming in control um so this month anyway happens to be a month where in last year we all uh, many most of us lost a lot of family members to covid in in this month april and um i and parul parul i'm sure that she's nodding because she has been in the industry she would have seen that pain of people especially especially elderly who were attacked by the pandemic and i lost my dad in april last year which left my mother alone and till the time he was there we never even thought of everything was absolutely perfect everything was just just going so well and suddenly everything has changed and um rajesh picked a topic that we all are from metros and we are so busy sometimes in our lives that we are probably not giving time to them but i think the moral task the basic moral task of care giving that i think is being with them being committed to committed to them uh, health is one part of it but being with them spending time with them and we were so busy in in growing as we always say in growing ourselves that we never thought that they are growing old and this is the stage we are in this is the stage we are in suddenly um i i don't think that any of us were prepared for this personally in our lives um but as an as as an organization as as an institute as india we are so not ready for it i have realized it last year and for the whole year i'm going through it um we really need focus on this area ragu so i'm extremely thankful to you for picking this up and even if we are able to make a little bit of difference to this i think i will be i will be very very glad hey ragu ragu yeah. this is alok yes. Uh, yes. can yes, i come sir. in yes of course yeah so well, first of all thank you very much for having me on the panel and i think uh, it all started with uh, to some extent it all started with your post on linkedin 
to which I put a comment saying need of the hour. Yes. Uh, but before I go there, let me let me just back off a little bit and and say this. And and if anybody on the panel doesn't agree, please feel free to contradict that part. Uh, I think we are all very privileged to having been born and brought up in a country that is super rich on its culture and extremely strong from a value system perspective. In fact, all of us have grown up listening and reading about Shravan who took care of his parents and yes. how, how all of us are so aligned to this thought that we need to take care of the elders, right? And to me, I think the realization came in, while I've always carried this thing, the sense of responsibility and my commitment to taking care of the elders in the family, but I think it all came down really hard and hit me, hit me, I would say very, very hard, especially last year when my mom had a very bad fall and she had to go through a, you know, shoulder uh, rotor ball replacement surgery, oh. 80, 83 years old, we were very scared. And then she went through multiple different surgeries after that. And uh, as, as one can imagine, all of us are keeping extremely busy. I'm also keeping busy. My wife is a professional in her own right. She's keeping busy. She has her own stuff going on, our travel schedule, so on and so forth. And when I looked around, I realized that this is one space that hasn't been really uh, worked upon by anybody, whether it is the government regulators, whether it is the you know, healthcare service providers, or call it medical majors. No, nobody has really taken, taken a really serious stab at doing something about it. And the, and the challenge is that, as you rightly pointed out, the aging population is fastest growing in the country, is a, is a fastest growing demographic cohort. And you talked about life expectancy going up. I was reading about it. It all started when mom went down with, with her problems, that close to 71.43 uh, years of average age will be what we will achieve by 2025 in India. Yes. And, and close to... 50% of 65 plus years uh, aged, aged people in the country will have single or comorbidity, or comorbidity uh, conditions. Now that's big, that's, that's big. And in fact, one third of 75 plus years aged uh, elders will have one activity of daily living at a limitation. So there is clearly support required. There's clearly assistance required and it can't be managed um, all by by oneself. Uh, Absolutely. Most everybody is working, everybody is busy with whatever they do. So you ask this question, so what, how do, how do people like us see elder care? Uh, how, do we, how do we look at it? I think if I, was to, if I was to really put it in words, I would say, and this is from experience, I would say, for me, elder care is a trusted support system that I can fall back on in providing the best possible care and the best possible attention to the elders at home in a holistic manner. You know, it's it just not about the medical attention. It's not just about taking care of their daily activities. It's also about going beyond that and providing some sort of company, some sort of a social network in, in which they can get connected with like-minded folks within their age group and, yes. and, and also live a life which they all feel good and happy about. Uh, not to take away the responsibility that I carry for my elders, that obviously will always remain. But I think when it comes to elder care, there has to be a support system, an ecosystem that gets built in the country through appropriate uh, intervention from different constituents in the, in the setup. So, so I think that's extremely important and uh, timing is absolutely right. Given the fact that, uh, as you rightly pointed out, it's it's an aging population, and we will see more of it, especially in the organization context. When we look at our organization today, we are okay because our average age amongst the 35, 36,000 employees we have in the country is just about 28, 29. Yes. There are very few of us who probably are going through that, you know, that period in our life where elder care is taking a big priority. A majority of our workforce is still not there. Correct. It's still not there. But as, as, a, as a company that wants, wants to be employee-friendly, employee-sensitive, 
employee centric we need to start thinking about it today so that we can make some um, you know meaningful progress on on this specific aspect and 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 you know some some of manager uh, employee expectations over a period of time that's good very well said uh, alok thank you very much uh, <clears throat> dr parul uh, from your perspective you know they say you know uh, when uh, a, a, a doctor meets a patient uh, you know 80% is counseling only 20% is caring uh, treating the disease so you must have a lot of experience around this so uh, what's yeah. your perspective so that's absolutely true and i agree with all the panelists so far uh, you know it's it's a mixture of everything and uh, human beings and especially indians are driven primarily by their emotions i mean you guys are running big corporates uh, and you must have realized that behind all policies and strategies there is always an emotion uh, attached and more so with this elderly group i mean i'm known for my opts to get delayed because a patient who's taken a 10 15 minutes consult is not just about eyes i ultimately know their life stories their patients who end up crying and they are wondering we came here for eye consult like why did i tell you that i'm going through this or i'm going through that and it's a very vulnerable age group and you always feel um, you know that you should spend extra time on that and you're very true i mean very little is about the health problem that you spend little time with them it's all about that care and compassion so i think even in elderly care i think the tool here the few words which i've picked up is trust as uh, alok saying that plays a very important part in any kind of care especially this um, age group uh, holistic emotions um, compassion i think compassion and empathy in whatever way uh, you know you're providing health care to them on various uh, uh platforms so uh, because you're taking care of health you're taking care of their uh, other aspects their financial things uh, you know recreational activities i just went through your website also before joining uh, the session to see what all is uh, you're offering uh, for them uh, so everything would mean a lot of compassion and as everybody said i'm appalled by how this segment is completely overlooked forget any 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 other place even in healthcare you have pediatric wards you have pediatricians you have maternity wards but there are no geriatric wards there is no geriatric specialty Absolutely. we don't do md ms geriatric is not a popular branch that we take in so it's just uh, i think probably if we had internet and if we had voices 20 30 years back geriatric would have been a very big thing it's just how conventionally healthcare has been set up so we had md ms surgery gynae this that geriatric never came up we even have preventive health care we have psm we have social medicine which has gone down to the rural area but geriatric has never picked up like even now i think only four or five medical colleges across india uh, yes. have post graduation or fellowships short term in geriatric age group even in a hospital you go to the biggest hospital private sector or government sector you don't see geriatric wards hence it's a very lost segment and hence i'm very glad that this conversation is happening because it's these kind of voices now i already have ideas that the next meeting i'm going to have with chairman next in max healthcare probably i'm going to be talking about geriatric healthcare and incorporating Excellent. home care we have home care right but it's not seamless it's very checkered even now yeah. home care has not been able to go where even even with max healthcare for example we've not been able to reach where we were supposed to be because we don't have specialty home care if you hire a bunch of nurses or you know phlebologists to take the blood sample or give them care they are not specialized people and one person can't tailor make it all so my ortho chairman will keep saying that i need people to do home care for elderly who are trained in ortho and physiotherapy and they know how to lift a patient or to do physio uh, on the other hand the onco person will say that i need a person who specializes in this so similarly geriatric age group even there we need to have the specialized people uh you know so the whole whole system even the healthcare in itself needs to do so much and to think and talk about it and of course there are so many other dimensions and as arti pointed out i mean being in healthcare uh, i lost my mom in law to covid last year and uh, all of us were frantically just looking for bed and oxygen and you know how it is so the only thing which i told our heads is that i have two moms on both the sides don't make me beg and plead for them uh so it had come to that you know survival uh, for people and uh, went through a lot i've seen a lot of people and this is the time when everybody is doing varsi uh, one year for uh, you know lost people and i i can't fathom once i come back from work everybody knows that my one hour the tea time after work just goes in replying whatsapp messages because there are at least 20 messages every day 
where do i take my mom to where do i take my father to which speciality which care this that so i i i just can't understand people who don't have people who know somebody who help care how do they even function in india how do they reach out who's the best where do i go to from here that's one aspect second is that you know, as alok said that we all have this shravan in us where we think that we can do it all for our parents and then because we don't have time um, you know both both uh, partners are now working uh, earlier you know you had women at home so at least they could chip in with care now both partners are working so we want to do it all but we can't do it all and then all these emotions and guilt and this and that comes so when we reach out for elderly care also even there it has to be integrated well enough so that it doesn't feel very cut and dry or a corporate plan that you've extended to your parents because you won't be okay with that also yeah. you'll feel that uh, and parents yeah. will also not be okay with that yeah. so yes yes we have to be involved and i think maybe at later stage when we are talking more about the other dimensions i was just thinking like a buddy program because elderly is always need somebody they can relate to so like our clone so for random things for them to click buttons and to reach out for various services would still they would do it but probably like a hand holding buddy for everybody uh, who 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 they have that feeling that it's family like empathy and compassion like when i'm treating somebody uh, it's almost like family most people end up saying that dog we don't feel you're a dog you're a family so i think that's very important when you you at such an important role and you're going to lead this forward in a big way so all your staff and anybody who's involved if they work with a lot of empathy and compassion rather than just being a call center and directing Absolutely. people for various options um, just to start i mean there's so much we can talk about but i thought whatever is coming to my mind i'll just put it out there and we can take it forward from there absolutely so thank you so much i think you touched upon multiple aspects glad you talked about the geriatric uh, care the lack of geriatricians in india i would have anyway uh, you know asked you that as well um, i think you know uh, each of you have given the top of the mind um, uh, recollection top of the mind um, uh, uh, answer to you know what elder care means to you and a lot of you have weaved in your personal experience which is what it should be um i was just looking at um uh um, the dictionary as well as we were talking as to what does care mean and as uh, as you could expect it it is uh, it's a lot more than healthcare right you know it says the provision of what's necessary for health welfare maintenance and protection of someone or something so i'm glad none of you restricted uh, yourselves to just the you know connotation of health health care but uh, in general if you ask 9 out of 10 people when uh, you know elder care what is what does elder care mean to you they will they will think of health care at best some safety related aspect um so i'm glad you know you uh, each of the panelists here looked at it a lot more than uh, just the healthcare because there is there's a lot more that we can do and as uh, arthi you touched upon it you know uh, care also means even from a dictionary standpoint you know serious attention or consideration applied to doing something correctly or to avoid damage or work that means there is a risk mitigation or prevention aspect you know what can you do you know prior to an event occurring so all these aspects are very very valid and i hope that uh, you know uh, the uh, when when we look at elder care as we go forward you know the holistic nature of what care should mean uh, would be increasingly um, understood by every stakeholder you know in this journey so <clears throat> maybe we'll uh, we'll get to a little more um, uh, uh, deep dive into uh the other aspects of uh, what the corporates could be potentially doing here uh so maybe if i can call upon you or the you know uh, you you've been working with a quite a few, quite a few global financial services uh, companies uh leveraging the talent pool in india and uh, you know as of now they say uh, over 1.3 million uh, employees are uh, employed in gcc alone uh, in over 1300 uh, organizations so uh, given that you are looking at employee relations and you specialize in hr um, are you seeing any perceptible change in the way gccs are looking at this uh, aspect 
any insights as to what the barriers could be in, in adapting uh, in an initiative like this, uh, supporting the employees? Uh, what do you think that can be done about this? Uh, thanks, Raghu. I, I think that I'll give you my personal view as well as the view as a holistic from a corporate perspective that what is it that they are thinking? Are they there yet? No. It's not about one organization as such. I mean, I'm, I'll try to put it across as a holistic from a corporate perspective. Elder care from last year has become more talked about topic than it was any time before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when we today think about flexibility, that who, who, which are the people who need flexibility as we are getting back to work, we're returning to work, there are policies of uh, returning to work, etc. in all organizations, which is ongoing. So what is it that gives us an exception to the person for, you know, working from home? Um, in, in US, you know, that reasonable accommodation process is there, wherein uh, which, which says that if you have elders to take care of, enough reason for you to be working from home. So um, do we have it in India? I'm, I'm talking about legal aspect of it, right? Do we have it in India? No, no. So uh, when I when you talk about employee relations, I touch a lot of pieces with legal. So no, India, we do not have any such thing. But uh, do organizations want to do that? Are they trying to take care of such, um, such aspects? I think some of them are. Some of them are. And Parul nailed it when she said that a cut and dry approach of, you know, this is a corporate, they have these services and these are the services I'm giving to my mother is not going to suffice in an Indian environment. Yeah. Indian environment is a little different. We, we, we They want you. Yes. You know, they, they, they want you. They want, um, the elders would want their own people around. And when, when we say that laughter is actually timeless and uh, even if you're giving them health care and there's no laughter and um, if, if at all the dreams which are at every stage, they, they are not culminating, then it means that the person, whatever health care you give, I don't think that works. I mean, that's my personal opinion, unless you're getting that background right. Health care is, a, is, is a, you know, cherry, but the base is different. The base is the compassion. Base is empathy. Yes, I am with you. Look. I am with you on this journey. Like I will stay till till the time, you know. So, so I, I, and I have realized it so closely, so closely, Raghuvi last year that um, I feel it even more. Healthcare is not some. I, I'm not saying I'm not de demeaning healthcare, but that is something which is very important. More important is that what is it that we are giving them, and if corporates are able to give this time to their employees. That is something which I would aspire for. Give it a choice, okay? So that time, that fine, you you have to take care of elderly, your choice. You decide, how do you deliver? How do you work? Like you get, again, the same point, maternity, you get your six months, right? And then you get a lot of, uh, you, you still, parents are also, and elders are also at, at the same stage. They, they require the similar kind of care. Yeah. Um, I think this is where I would look at corporates for. If, um, are they in India, are we there yet? Far, far, no. And and I know Rajesh can talk a bit, Alok can talk about it. Parul is yes. seeing it and Max is also corporate. She'll be, works with yes. so many corporates. No, we are far, far from that. We I have understand. to nurture, we have to nurture it more. Hmm. I think, uh, I think she's making yeah. sense. Uh, you mm -hmm. saying something, Raghu? Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Anna. Yeah, no. Just uh, I, 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 am fully, fully in uh, alignment with what uh, Arti just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, uh, we are looking at this a little differently. We haven't really. I, w I won't claim that we have done anything. Uh, it's just a beginning for us. Um, maybe COVID has accelerated that that internal. Yeah desire to go and do something much bigger than what it is. Childcare has always been our priority, as you can imagine. Yeah. Opening up creches, opening up in the office. You know, we have creches in the office. We have, uh, you know, childcare centers and all sorts of things that we do out, out there. And maybe it was the it was need of the hour because the, the, the workforce is very young and they're in that period mm -hmm. of their life where, uh, you know, they're more worried about the you know, the attention that they need to provide to the children that they have. 
But I think uh, we are now looking at this slightly differently. We're saying, hey, listen, we need to prepare our workforce to handle this thing that's going to come their way, right? We are never trained to take care of elders. Okay. Never trained, right? It, it comes by experience. You get into one issue, you solve that issue. You get another issue, you solve that issue. There is no sense. There's no way of getting sensitized about it. No way to pick up those telltale signs that are there in front of you, but you're not picking it up. I can tell you from my own experience, uh, parents, as in my mom and my in-laws, all three of them in that they are in that age bracket of 80 plus, um, and and the claim is that oh, I'm absolutely fine. I don't need any help. I don't need any support. I can walk. I can run. I can do everything. And then that happens, you know, unfortunate incident incident sure. happened with my mom working moving around giving instructions to people in the kitchen getting the house controlled as if she's the boss which typically happens i guess it happens in every house <laughs> <True>. <laughs> right but but unfortunate day and she fell and, and, and so so it's about they, they also they also link it to social stigma somewhere in the in the in the country there is a social stigma to taking help taking support from others if you're growing old so Training the workforce and getting them sensitized about it, building that awareness is extremely important. So that's one thing that we are focused on. The second thing we have, we have, we have always been very flexible with our workforce when it comes to their personal needs. Um, we, we have always given, you know, people the option of working from home. In fact, much before COVID, 30% of our workforce in India was working from home. Now we've gone up to as high as 80, 90%. Okay. But but that's what we call it as connected workplace. So we have a program that's been running since 20, 2010 globally. In India, we implemented that program. We said you can work from home. So being flexible on the timings that they have for, for coming to the office. The third is, uh, is, is you know, uh, there is a wellness program that we run through which we now have telemedicine support for our elders. So your parents can be living in a remote location. Yes. Uh, they have the access to the wellness program platform that is there for telemedicine, and and they can they can they can they can get access to that. They can take help from there and and you know get the support the required support. Um, I think I think there's a lot more that that needs to be done, and that's where I think we should be spending our time. Uh, and Par- Dr. Parul touched upon it. She talked about buddy program. And I was thinking about this as more like a support group. Can there be a support group that can be created that can that can provide that that level of connect and that level of engagement for the elders that will allow them to be a lot more um, independent, at the same feeling independent, if not independent, feeling independent, and being proud of what they what they what they, how they're spending their life. Right, uh, that's very important. The second thing is. Uh, Tying up with, uh, you know, call it uh, elderly home providers. As a, as a corporate, and this is something that within the HR team we've been discussing, Compen Ben team we're discussing. Is there a way we can find someone who has a pan India presence of elderly homes, elderly home service, elderly homes? That that could that could also be a big uh, benefit for our our workforce. Um, the third thing that I think we can all think about is helping employees at the same time their parents on financial planning you know healthcare is becoming extremely expensive uh, i don't know how the doctors would react to this but uh, it, it's 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 amazingly expensive and and if you don't plan for it now i'm not sure how can you provide the best of the uh, attention and medical attention to, to to the elders as as the time comes to to do that so financial planning. So that's another thing that that we've been talking internally within within Dell. Um, finally, maybe digital literacy programs run simple programs that can help the elders understand how to do simple things digitally. Now everything is becoming digital. You don't need to go to the bank. You don't need to carry your passbook. You don't need to cut a check. You can do everything online. So is there, is, is there, a, is there a way that one can uh, you know build a lot more awareness amongst the elders, workforce elders? As to how to how to manage some of these things, so a few things that we are thinking about. I thought I put it on the table for for everybody to. No, no absolutely. I'm I'm glad uh, you know you're looking at multiple aspects and yep. uh, and some of the some of the points that you mentioned is very very relevant. I know as did uh, Arthi in terms of um, 
uh, and also Dr. Parul, when she mentioned uh, the buddy program, you called it support group. There is yeah. a community uh, that uh, uh, that all of us, and especially elders and the caregivers, should start to increasingly leverage because you won't have all the answers. You're not prepared, you as you rightly mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And when you do that, you would need to fall back on people who have had some experience, who have had some, um, you know, uh, uh, similar kind of, uh, you know, uh, Situation. uh, situations that they went through. Yeah. Uh, that that's what would give you because increasingly, you know, uh, uh, healthcare from a provider standpoint is increasingly corporatized, corporatized, right? You know, you won't find, you'll find, you know, these advisors coming in bits and pieces when you have to put this together as a caregiver, you know, you would typically rely on support groups and you mentioned financial security, glad that you mentioned there's a big, big issue. Obviously in this uh, first uh, uh, panel, we won't be able to get into individual details, but Clearly, I'm glad you recognize that issue. This is something that uh, we would need to prepare for and all of us are not getting younger. So, you know, it's not just for those who are already in the uh, in the uh, post 60 uh, age, but also those who have to prepare for it. So there is a there are a lot of lot of aspects. Uh, Rajesh, you know, you you've had a lot of uh, professional experience in in large IT organizations and you founded a startup too. Uh, I know you, you've been a caregiver yourself, as you mentioned. Uh, what do you think should be the approach of corporates? We have already heard some of these, um, you know, initiatives that Alok is planning to do. Uh, what should be the approach of corporates to support their employees, and uh, why should they be looking at this seriously? I I would say, I, I think both, uh, you know, Alok uh, and Ati have covered it quite comprehensively. So let me try and pick it up a little differently. Uh I think there is very little realization of this, you know, issue and sensitization at this point of time. And I am sure just like many other causes people have, you know, promoted or seen, they really found that doing something like this actually adds back to employee engagement and therefore productivity of the company. Employees are in the office and they're worried about all the time about other things. So they're not going to be best productive. This definitely has a productivity benefit. It will have employee engagement and therefore employee stickiness benefit. Right? The other aspect, I would think that since there is so little sensitization, I mean, I, I don't see a wheelchair benefit at a train station, let alone bus station. You know, seats being there for them on public transport, access in the malls, cinemas. I mean, at so many times, people tend to, tend to see elders as a nuisance or blocking their way rather than being sensitive to them. So I think raising overall sensitivity into society is so important. That's what makes them feel so much more, you know, incapacitated. And then they react and say, no, no, I can do everything. Right? And on the other side, just a pragmatic aspect. I think once organizations or corporates come in and start supporting these, the scale will increase. You know, yeah. Just like a simple example of healthcare, you know, I if my you know parent is eighty, I will not get a healthcare scheme for them. You know, insurance I just can't get. But as a group insurance, you get not only you get, but you also get pre-existing ailments covered. Exactly. You know, like if services like yourself or any other organizations providing, once they say I am going to enroll five thousand employees, you know, suddenly the game changes. That encourages, that makes it more easy to afford, that gives scale to people who provide it, and then starts to build something. You know, he, he said people who have old age homes or, you know, elder care homes in every city, they don't. Because, you know, the old model was this, you know, very government type of old age homes. Now, suddenly you have some very high end super premium, and then there is nothing in between. In between. There are in very few places, right? I think this overall pragmatic development of infrastructure will greatly benefit as corporates come in. And then, you know, each of the people will benefit. And if I can add yeah, to please, this please. piece, I think we need a lot of awareness, Rajesh. Yes. And elder, elder homes or elderly homes where we're thinking of is a great concept. Maybe when we are elders, we will buy it. I'm, I'm not sure that my, our, our parents at this stage will no, buy Very it. hard, very hard. <laughs> so maybe you start with like a daycare, you know, like you have crashes, you know, why don't yeah. you have, elders can go somewhere in the day. 
That's right. Uh, you don't That's have. Right. I mean, I I went when I started working. I had a kids' day. Why don't we have an elders' day in the office? You know, why not a parents' day? They love to get involved in kids' life. World has changed. They haven't seen it. Most exactly. times, they don't have an idea where you work. Exactly. Right. Simple yeah. things engage them, involve them, make them feel part of the society. You know, the pace of change today is so much more than it was twenty, fifty, thirty years ago. You know, so they just feel left behind. So Rajesh, with your permission, I'm going to copy it. I hope you don't have a patent on it. No, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to know, and hopefully, we promote many more people to do. Yeah, yeah. Elder's Day. Elder's Day. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 We did. We did yeah. Elder's Day with one of the organizations we work with, and it it was a big hit. You know. You know. They, they, we typically have bring your children to work and so yeah. on. You know, Elder's Day will also kind of improve the emotional bond. Bring your parents to work. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, uh, we've been talking, uh, Raghu, uh, Rima, and we've been talking about some really uh, interesting events, and exactly, you know, like a one-day event with organizations where it's it's not just about superficial thing, but really to make it special for them and really know what is it that they would like on that particular day, how would they want to spend that day, and then plan a event around it, and it, you know, and then we've been talking about it, so hopefully soon. The first one would be coming out there. No, no, um, yeah. You know that's what will create awareness, Shilpi. That yeah. is what they will come out of their shells to see that yes, this is the world that we live in, and this is the right world where we can actually be a little flexible than our old thoughts that we always have. You know, we have to be at home and we have to be taken care here itself. If it is not there, then you know, not nice. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. You know, interesting that um, you know each of us would have. Touch something on the cultural aspects, you know. Alok, you you began with uh, talking about Shravan and Dr. Parul also added to it, <laughs> and uh, Rajesh and Arthi talked about um, you know the reluctance of um, uh, the the elders to go into a old age home or or uh, or even our own reluctance care. as well. Raghu. Our own I... reluctance as well, absolutely. In fact, even those e e even those countries where there's been prevalent for quite some time they did a recent survey they found that uh, a overwhelming majority of the elders you know they prefer you know what they call aging in place that means they want to age in the same uh, you know location or residence that they have been used to familiarity i think a it's familiarity, familiarity. absolutely yeah so, nobody wants to be uprooted and especially if you want to you know if it's they're not their own decision but you're trying to convince them that it's going to be good for them so uh, you know it's a feeling of uprootedness for them and especially for that generation see our generation still moved a lot mm -hmm. you know you're in bangalore then you get transferred to bombay and then you go in international assignments so we are used to moving around my father one location entire life spent in that one location till the time he passed away so there's no constant movement of, of towns and cities so then when you ask somebody to move uh, just because you know, uh, so you know, familiarity, uprootedness, whatever we call, uh, it 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 doesn't work for them. Yeah, true. And I think you know the, between having no care at all and being sent to or be living in a yeah. system, there has to be many shades in between. In between, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, Doctor Parul, one of the things that uh, I was thinking about, you know, you you would have seen a lot of elderly patients, you know, as you handle cataract surgery and so on. And given that you are in an area where, are, where there are quite a few corporates, since we have been discussing corporates, and some of the caregivers who would be accompanying their parents, you would have had, you know, uh, quite a bit of discussions around around uh, the elderly care that some of these uh, employees would be giving. Uh, just wondering, is there any trend that you are observing in terms of, um, you know, what could be uh, the need of a caregiver? Uh, how have you, you know, kind of come across some of these uh, aspects and is there any perspective that you would like to add? For the elderly, is you're saying? For the elderly and for, for the caregivers, you know, who could be employees of other organizations. I think what uh, Raghu is trying to say is that, you know, staying in Gurgaon because it's a corporate hub, mm -hmm. a lot of your patients perhaps, uh, you know, are from the corporate world. So have you seen a challenge wherein, you know, when they come with their parents, is there any dynamics which you've observed, any trend which you've observed? 
Yeah, yeah, all the time. See, I, and we see a mix of people. Uh, mm-hmm. Most of the time, it's these, uh, I mean, all working professional getting their parents. Um, and you can see the edginess because if there is an extra waiting time, they're always requesting in prior that I hope we don't have to wait long. I hope it will be done in as much time. So that's what, forget other people corporates bringing their parents. For me as well, because I took care of both my uh, mother's mother-in-law, I call her mother-in-law whom I lost. She was so dear. Um, and my mom, uh, both of them lost their spouses very early in life. So I've been the caretaker for them from the very beginning. Uh, with my busy schedule, even for me, it becomes overwhelming. And if my organization had a program like elderly care, where my mother didn't have to reach out to me for anything small and big, it would be a big relief on me itself, you know, despite having the know house and having uh, um, all colleagues and friends around. So uh, the whole thing is that it, it's very complex because when people come, they have to, it's like a duty that they have to do but they're also pressed for time. And I don't see any dynamics change over a period of time. Uh, I've seen elderly is being brought in by their full-time home cares, uh, which they have employed or nursing care at home. I've seen elderly is coming in with their uh, drivers and domestic health also. Uh, they're never happy. I and mean, people, the elderly who are coming with their families are still more open and talkative. Somehow I, I've never seen people coming with their uh, helps and drivers being have, have that you know that vibe of positivity around them or a very open or a very talkative so I think a lot of empathy and compassion goes there so you will have to figure out some way to you know keep that going um anything else yeah. I think, you know, you, you brought this up, uh, you know, uh, empathy, compassion, sensitivity is another theme that was kind of coming through in every panelist um, view. And, uh, and, and, and as, as we rightly uh, touched upon uh, at the beginning itself, you know, the family values and respect of elders is very, very characteristic of our own culture. And uh, clearly this is something that has touched uh, everybody's heart. So maybe as we I'm looking at the time here. So as we wrap up, so putting it all together, maybe I'll look one question to you, uh, since uh, you're the CEO, how would you look at this uh, initiatives like this uh, from, um, from a, you know, how does it make business sense? Would you look at this as, uh, as, uh, as an investment that would have its own returns? How would you look at this as a CEO? Oh, absolutely. Without any doubt. In fact, uh, Rajesh hit the nail on the head when he talked about, you know, this being a direct, uh, I mean, the direct benefit out of this being employee engagement, productivity improvement, much more business continuity. You know, it, it'll be unfair on our part uh, to expect our team members not to take time off if, if they were having a challenge on the home front, like ma- managing the situation that they may be in on a particular Elder that they may have in the house, so so it, it, it has a it has a direct benefit to the to the organization. But I think the struggle that corporates are having today is a couple of them. Number one, we don't have one. You know, we don't have one single point to go to or single entity to go to and say, "Hey, help us with this." So there's no aggregation happening. There are different services, different providers, um, and and. One is always questioning how much can we trust them? How much can we really rely on them? Because if we were to, if we were to empanel a particular entity in 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 providing healthcare services, we need to be sure that we're doing the right thing for our Absolutely. employees. We don't Absolutely. want these employees to turn around and you know Absolutely. start. Yeah. You know well, what I, it is. Why, right? why did you tie up with them? You know, yeah, I mean, kind of you don't want that additional load coming on you. So okay. we need somebody who is an aggregator of services. We need somebody who has a platform provides it as a platform, right? That's one thing. The second thing I think that is missing, and, and it'll take some time, I'm sure, is the capacity, which is pan-India, uh, for a proper coverage. I can't say, okay, employees in this city, I'm able to help you with this. Employees in some other city, I can't help you. Can't, okay. be, can't be selective, right? It Absolutely. has to be somebody who can be pan-India, can give a proper coverage. Okay, tier three, tier four, not possible. Fine, understandable. At least... Metros and tier one, uh, sorry, tier two. Metros and tier two should should be possible. Should be exactly. something that that people should provide. 
Uh, finally, something that really crossed uh, my my attention and coming in for this, I was just doing a little bit of surfing, is time bank concept. Switzerland has adopted it. Phenomenal yes. concept. Yes. Um, I'd never ever heard about it earlier, but really good and nice. And if uh, folks like you who are in this in this field now can promote that and with appropriate support from the government and the regulatory bodies, we should we should consider that very seriously. Uh, if if younger folks can can start banking time, then that will come to their rescue uh, when they grow old. So so it's it's a phenomenal concept. But frankly, happy to happy to get engaged with anybody who can bring in some level of consistent delivery of trusted services across the country. What is this concept, Alok? What are you talking about? So, so I, doc, doc, sorry, go, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. So, Dr. Paro, basically, they say no time is money. Oh, so, time. so, time is money. So, so, as an individual, I have time available. I can commit to a service that some elderly is looking for. Mm-hmm. And in return, I would have banked that time. So, it gets accrued as time of service that I can then go and uh, you know, uh, take as and when I grow old. So there are there are these age uh, limitations. You have to be upwards of that age to be able to encash uh, I mean, the sense. time. And the time. So, oh, that's brilliant. But it and it neither probably uh, Raghu, you can have a volunteering system like corporates have CSR. So you, similarly, yours could also have a volunteer platform where people could just bank their time. You, I say I can give say four hours in a week the organization for elderly care and if you can you know map and it could be just sitting with an elderly having a cup of tea coffee it's a known thing a social being uh, you know and so people bank in their time and then it kind of becomes like a buddy and program and a support group also where people who have time on their hand just bank those hours with you and then it's your duty to put them to their close network so it's suppose area wise or somewhere local and it may not be a buy bank like if to for starters. I mean, um, that yeah, can so, be done. People would, I would love to volunteer for an hour if you tell me that go in sector 57, there's a person who would, you know, uh, benefit by your being there for an hour. I mean, I'm sure it can be incorporated. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so some of these, some of these uh, ideas are definitely, you uh, know, something that we should be considering. Yeah, and it gives uh, your company a softer approach. Absolutely. Yeah. You know that they're people, so you're engaging more people, and then it becomes a human to human connect, and then people will have stories, and it just kind of the voices it becomes it, more it builds, more prominent. It builds. Correct. Yeah, it builds. And it resonates with Gen C Gen Z, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, the young uh, bachas, in fact, they yeah. will benefit them. Yeah. Like so many out of our bachas don't have nannies and dadis around. They don't yeah. have the stories the way we've grown up. That's so I right. would forcefully force my daughter that you have to spend four hours. You have not spent with my nani and dadi, but do it as your corporate activity. It should become mandatory. All but I should go and spend some time with elderly, if not with their own ones, but some elderly. There's so much learning on both the sides. They would just grow like how we thought of it in hospital. I thought of proposing it in hospitals also. You know, uh, people from pediatric wards and then there are elderly. You're not so bedridden and sick all the time. So. Probably engagement of the pediatric ward and the geriatric people. Some engagement time we've been talking in our hospital that both would benefit like that. Both would benefit. Both, benefit. So both would benefit. You know, it, 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 the, the elderly will feel valued, but at the same yeah. time, you get access to the wealth of experience yeah. that they have. And you know, old age is when you know you have all the answers. Nobody asks you questions. They say, right? You know, the wisdom uh, flows. Ah, uh, absolutely. So, you know, one thing, you know, as Alok mentioned, and I saw each of you kind of uh, talked about it, this is still at a very, very nascent stage. And the only way this can um, progress is multiple organizations coming together, collaborating. You know, uh, we even talked about volunteering and uh, making use of the youngsters, uh, you know, willingness to do some social activities. And uh, the pan-India presence that uh, Alok referred to is a very, very crucial factor because you, as an organization, you could be in one place, but your employees may have their parents anywhere in India. And, uh, you know, uh, tier two, tier three, tier four, all of these would have to be represented. And the only way that will happen is when the ecosystem develops and the, uh, and the demand creates its own supply. The two-way network effect will have to stay 
uh, we'll have to start to uh, work. And that's when you know some of these initiatives that we are planning to take uh, here would also uh, make a lot more meaning uh, because you know unless it touches everyone, every employee, you know it, it always becomes a, is a factor for the employer for the corporates to say, look, am I helping one section and not the other? Yeah. And uh, I'm glad that you also felt that there is a good business sense, you know, both Rajesh and um, Alok talked about. I think we touched multiple aspects of what elder care uh, should be, could be, and what some of the steps that each of the stakeholders can take. I guess, you know, within the time that we had, uh, this is about what we could cover. Thank you so much once again for uh, being part of the panel. It's been a lovely discussion. Thank you, Raghu. Thank you very much, Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.